he developed a great love for this country and the light and he painted the first on plain air painting which is in the art gallery of New South Wales um, the first painting to be done fully out of doors it's quite a major picture it's rather dark it's interesting it's not a you'd expect it to be full of light but it's quite a dark but but beautifully luminous painting he went to Melbourne and discovered a group of painters young painters uh, working at Heidelberg at this stage Julian was a trustee of the art gallery of New South Wales and he discovered these paintings which were full of light young Streeton young uh, McCubbin and young Tom Roberts and Condor I don't know whether Condor was there and they were they were painting pictures of light the Australian light so he went back to Sydney and he said to Montefiore who was the chairman of the or the president of the trustees of the art gallery of New South Wales I will vote for this painting of your that you want to collect is by this British artist of a stag at bay or a dog with a wet nose who knows what picture it was if you will vote for this young artist in Melbourne that I've just discovered called Arthur Streeton and there's a painting that I particularly want to acquire of his called still glides the stream and will for shall forever glide they were so poetic the way the titles they gave weren't they which is an absolutely marvelous painting and if you vote for that I'll vote for your dog stag at bay and of course Streeton and Roberts subsequently came to Sydney thinking uh, that the streets of Sydney must be paved with gold and they set up their camp at at, um, at Sirius Cove. Julian had previously had a camp at the Balmoral Beach uh, with uh, Fullwood and uh, they uh, worked there, painted there and in fact there's quite a lot of paintings that emanate from there. Sid Long was there, one of Julian's students um, and Lambert came out there his first student, Julian's first student, Ethel Stevens was there, the daughter of Professor Stevens, and they painted. And this was before actually Julian set up his school. So you might really say that the beginnings of the Julian Ashton Art School were on Balmoral Beach. And there's a, a, a flagpole there to mark the position of that, uh, which was put up uh, under the auspices of the wonderful Barry O'Keefe, who was mayor of Mossman for many years and an absolutely marvellous person and patron of the arts and uh, president of course of the National Trust uh, when he was mayor we held a, an exhibition and a reenactment of the artist camp that Julian had had there with Fullwood in the 1890s or 18, 80s and 70s and 80s and um, that was uh, a lesson for us because we didn't realize that God can sometimes be a little bit jealous of artists and we set up these tents on the water's edge and a huge storm came uh, and washed a lot of it away uh, but it was, it was, we had people talking down there, uh, we had music, we had reenactment of the whole thing, paintings. There's a painting here uh, of my Uncle Dix, Dick Ashton, uh, of the camp. Well, I was brought up then by my mother's side of my family. Oh, they're both, both families were very interesting. My father's family, um, Guillaume, Guillaume Delprat, was the founder of the Broken Hill Proprietary. And he was also a sculptor. And he... Uh, there's a, he did a bust of Braille which, for which he won, won a silver medal in Paris and he did the bust of Braille so that blind people could feel the face of their benefactor and he was a damn good sculptor it was a, it was a sculpture in the corner of the house of self-portrait he did at the age of 60 or 70 I think he was so that was my earliest memory and then of course uh, growing up with Howard and his studio with the, sky, the high skylight and his paint and the smell of the oil paint and his palette and I remember being fascinated by this palette with the colors the shiny little tubes little cylinders of 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 of, of color vermilion the, the, the golden uh, yellows yellow ochre white shiny white and then the, the ultramarine the depths of the ultramarine and the the cobalt blue all these wonderful colors and the way he draw them down with his brush into the body of the palette and he's smearing it around and then picking it up or sometimes applying it to the canvas with his palette knife and I was a I was you know five six seven and this these are the earliest my earliest memories of of uh, I suppose things of interest to me this house was built in Howard's garden 
I, I was surrounded by wonderful paintings, including a marvellous painting by Norman Lindsay uh, and uh, various other artists. Sid, uh, it was a great collection that Howard had in his house. I, I did art at school. I was at Sydney Grammar School and I was drawing all the time. I just like drawing nudes, which has been something that I've done all my life. Um, I don't know why that is. It's just something that I do. And um, in any case, um, a French master objected to me doing these nudes and took me up to the headmaster, thinking that perhaps I was going to be beaten. In the event, the headmaster, who was an enlightened man, Oxford man, called Mr Healy, I think we called him the Rod for some reason. Um, and he uh, told the teacher that the teacher should get back to his charges and he would look after this boy. And then he examined my drawings and it was a turning point in my life because he, I thought he was going to whack me. I'd never been whacked and, I, and, and you know, I was going to be reprimanded for doing these drawings of nudes, you see. I had lots of these. And he looked at them and he said, you know, they're very good, but you don't know anything about anatomy. And I've got an anatomy book here, and we'll take it down. And he showed it, he opened it up. He said, see this knee, you see there's a structure. Of I didn't realise what a multifaceted man he was, my headmaster at Sydney Grammar. And he said, now I'm going to give you permission to draw in all your classes. But that's something that's going to be just between you and me. He's dead now, so I can tell this. It's only between you and me, and I will instruct the staff at the, uh, the next com com uh, common meeting, com common room meeting, that they are to let you draw, but you will not never tell that, never tell anybody that. And so I had a charmed life through grammar. I used to draw all the time. I don't know whether the current headmaster would approve of that sort of behaviour there. I went to the Mossman Daily, the Mossman Daily in Great Northern, Proprietary Limited. And it was, it, I think, it was, it was office at the town hall. And I used to go over to council meetings and I used to do drawings. And I, you know, it was a very small, uh, a little firm uh, run by the Walker family and uh, I, in fact uh, one of the Walkers had been a, a year ahead of me at grammar and I think that's one of the reasons why I got the job and there was a great goss press in the back rumbling away and they had linotype operators and there was Miss Foley who had glasses that thick from looking at copy and who used to recite Shakespeare and it was just a hive of activity. It was an old-fashioned country um, press in the middle of Mossman. And of course, it's all gone now. It was in Myaga Road. And uh, I was there for a year. Then I joined the Julian National Art School as a night student. And my contemporaries there were Salvatore Zofria. Brett Whiteley had just left, and he was somewhat legendary in the school. Nigel Thompson was there, who, of course, was a very eminent Mossman painter, became a very eminent Mossman painter. Salvatore Zofria, who you've got a painting of his in your foyer of the, ho of the gallery. And she, he, he was a... He and I were very close and did portraits of each other. And um, there were many artists at, at that time who since made great reputations uh, in the school. And then I eventually, after a year at the Daily, I went uh, and started, uh, started uh, full-time at the school with Mr. Henry Gibbons. And Mr. Henry Gibbons was one of the most extraordinary people in the art world. He had taken over from Julian Ashton in 1942 uh, when he died, and he ran the school right up to the 60s. And amongst his students, it's like a who's who of Australian art. Dobell, Passmore, uh, Eric Wilson, Dadswell, um, you know, it just goes on and on. And then later on, John Olson and Brett Whiteley and Michael Johnson. And the thing about that school, I think, that has to be remembered is that it's not only the people that went there and became great names. It's the others who went there and went, then went to other institutions to create them. And for, for instance, Freeman and Badham and all of those people went to uh, what became the National Art School. So in fact, for a while, the National Art School was really um, the an extension of the Julian Ashton Art School. And of course, eventually, now they've, they, they're producing, uh, that changed after a while and we, they went more, became a more modernist school than we were. We remained more classical. They're both great schools. I was very lucky because I was showing at the Benarthen Gallery, Kim Benarthen, the great Kim Benarthen, who, you know, was the great art dealer of Australia. I mean, he was the Lorenzo de Magdi the Magnificent. He's still alive. God bless you, Kim. And Kim, I was showing with Kim, just started showing with Kim. And he rang me up and he said, Paul, there's a man here that wants to meet you. And his name was Michael Powell. 
and he was an English filmmaker who'd made a film called uh, The Red Shoes. You'd remember The Red Shoes, the lovely Moira Shearer. And uh, he also did The a Weird Mob and The Battle of the River Plate. Anyhow, he was there in the, in the gallery. And uh, he said, I'm going to make a film about Mr. Lindsay, one of Mr. Lindsay's novels, and I've been recommended to you that you should do this uh, by Mr. Lindsay himself. And now I find that Mr. Benathan is recommending you, so would you like to take the job? And I said, yes, I'd be delighted. And so I went to Dunk Island with Helen Mirren and James Mason and Jack McGowan. It was a wonderful cast. And uh, we were there on the island for three months and uh, made that lovely little film. And I did all the title. I had a naked Columbia in the titles and all the actors naked and so on. And that was all cut out by Columbia Pictures. They decided they were a bit naughty, these, all these drawings I did. But they've just brought out a director's cut and they've put them all back in along with uh, Peter Sculthorpe's music. So it's really quite a, a lovely, it's a visually beautiful film and an orally beautiful film. And uh, Helen uh, did drawings of, a drawing, I've got a drawing here of me that she did when I was drawing her nude. And of course, later on, I can probably say that I'm the only person in the world to have painted the queen in the nude because after all, she, later on, she went on to play the queen and she was a damn good queen too. With Sirens, uh, the lovely Elle McPherson, of course, and Portia de Rossi, and uh, oh, they were lovely. And uh, of course, uh, uh, Sam Neill played the role of Norman Lindsay himself in that. And one of the amusing uh, moments for, in that was when the ladies were posing nude, they had what they was called a closed set, which meant that nobody could actually look except the person, of course, who was looking through the lens, the cameraman. But as the artist, of course, I mean, I was seen by the ladies as being quite okay and quite innocuous, really. And uh, so when that scene was being shot, everyone turned their back when the ladies came in, except the director, I think. Maybe the director was allowed to look. And then uh, the, the, but I, was, I was able to stand there and look because I was the artist, after all. And the girls said it was most peculiar, one of the ladies said it was most peculiar looking out there into the vault of the, you know, the camera set and so on. And there was nobody there. They'd all turned their backs or they were looking aside, except you. <laughs> and they said they were rather glad to see me because then they could smile at someone. <laughs> but um, it, was, it was a lot of fun and, uh, and lovely. Filmmaking is a great art, of course. It's an enormous art. And uh, I wonder whether Rembrandt would have been a filmmaker. I wonder in another age whether, you know, some of those, um, Rubens, I'm sure, would have made films, you know. It's just got everything, hasn't it? I mean, some of the greatest works of art in our time are films, are motion pictures, aren't they? And so when they come to the art school to learn to draw and paint, I say, put all theory aside, just look and become learn to coordinate your hand and your eye to actually put something down accurately and observe it. That's what we've been doing at that school for a hundred years, you know? And I think that's the key to it all. Keep it simple, just draw. And after a while, your own style emerges anyhow. You know, you, 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 whatever you are will come through. And it's... A, a, a journey where the language you invent yourself and the freest people in our society are our artists. If you uh, think of all the arts, uh, a, a producer needs a crew uh, for a film, uh, a musician needs uh, backing, an orchestra, um, uh, an artist, all the artist needs is that blank canvas. And I think that's why we value art. Uh, because it is the soliloquy, it is the personal journey. I'm the patron of the society. And that was a very curious way that, that came about because I was here in Balmoral in my studio, minding my own business, and this lady rang up and she said, she was very assertive and she said, we want to form a Mossman Art Society. And I said, why? She said, we want a place to paint together. I said, I don't like painting with other people. And she said, well, we want you to be our patron. We were told by somebody in Mossman Council that if you became our patron, they would give us somewhere to paint. And I said, I find that most unlikely. But I thought to myself, hey, you know, there was an, there's, a, there's, a, there's an angle in this. 
I said, have you got a manifesto? And she said, what's that? And she said, no, we don't want a manifesto. And I said, yes, you do. I will become your patron if you let me write your manifesto, or at least the first point of your manifesto. She said, oh, of course, yes, okay. So we drew up a manifesto, and the first point of that manifesto was, we will work with Mossman Council to help create a regional gallery, a, a, a Mossman Gallery as part of the Regional Gallery Association. And I got a call from Kay Clark about a year after this the society had been running and we'd been haranguing the council and the councillors had said, this is great because we've got a lobby group. I got a phone call saying, we've done it, Paul. We've just voted the money and we've just got the grants and we're going to have a gallery. Good, good. And of course, the artists of Mossman, the Mossman Art Society still don't have anywhere to paint, but we're on the track. It is, we talk about Aboriginal sacred sites, and of course, all, all honour, all respect to the Aboriginals, and all compassion to what happened to them as a result of our coming here. But we are a society too, and it's, it is appropriate that we should have our sacred sites. And I think that the rocks, for instance, where uh, we, that the first settlement was made is a sacred site for, the white, for white people too. And, the, and uh, there was this wonderful exhibition, for instance, that's showing on the early art of the rocks uh, with Julian Ashton's paintings and Howard Ashton's and Sid, Sid Long and all of those early people who, who were there at the time. Uh, very important. And of course, Mossman has Balmoral Beach. Uh, so many artists. Lloyd Rees, who I gave the Mossman Art Prize for to one year. Uh, I, it was Port Jackson Press put a lot of uh, work by various artists into the Mossman Art Prize. There was some wonderful work in the uh, in there. Tim Storiers and Charlie Blackman's, and um, I, I saw this wonderful uh, lithograph by Lloyd, uh, and I thought, well, I'll have to give it to the grand old man. You know, he was the, the, the hero of art at the time, still is. And uh, he, he, to my astonishment, he turned up at the council chambers at the, for the opening. Barry O'Keefe, I think, was the, the mayor at the time or it could have been um, Dom Lopez, another wonderful mayor of Mossman. And uh, he said to me, you know, he said when he received the thing, he said, I am unique in Australian art, this wonderful, quavery voice. I am unique in Australian art because I am the only artist in Australia who has received an art prize from a great-grandfather and a great-grandson because when I was a boy, came down from Queensland and your great-grandfather said to me, you are the young man who will draw light. Not paint light, but draw light. And you know, he was right. That's what I've done. And I've, I have any advice to pass on to any, all of you young artists, all of you artists here. You know, learn to draw. Learn to draw. And remember, art is long, life is short and never get too full of yourself. That was wonderful. I'll never forget that. Never forget that, dear old Lloyd. Absolutely. I mean, Kevin Connor lived up there in Maroubin Road, did glorious paintings. Brett, Brett Whiteley was painting here. Uh, well, there were so many artists. Uh, I, can, you know, I, I could just go on and on and on. And of course, contemporary artists now, uh, uh, Anne Cape and Sue Fru and... Uh, uh, God, so many wonderful, wonderful painters. Uh, you know, you'd probably never have to go outside of Mossman to have to fill that gallery continually. Belmore Bay is a very good, and and of course up at George's Heights we have a gallery there now too, and uh, we have nine to five exhibitions there, uh, which are echoes of the Street and Roberts shows that they held. You know, the, first, the, the when Impressionism started. Um, and, uh, you know, things have come full circle. We're up there. We've got a studio overlooking the greatest harbour in the world. We have a festival of sun and skies every Christmas time. The school, the, this is the art school. We're, we're in the company there of many other wonderful artists. Guy Troughton, who's, who's teachers with us. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a place that has been painted, I'm sure. I mean, well, it all goes back to the carvings of the Aboriginals on the edge of the rocks. And they would have done paintings too, of course, but they're lost. Paintings are much less, less permanent than sculptures. But no, uh, it's, uh, it's a great place to grow up.
and it's been a great place to live, and it's been a great place to paint. My little principality of Y, which is my wife's too, of course, and our children's, it's the family's principality, we are, and our rabbits, of course, the rabbits are involved, two rabbits, five people, and things were pretty bad um, before we set up the principality, because um, things kept on going wrong, uh, you know, and we tried to get access to our property, but things kept on going wrong, and uh, mistakes were being made, which have subsequently been admitted by the council, and, you know, we thought, well, what have we got to, you know, we, we really felt as though we needed to make, create a playing field of our own, and so on the night that we were, uh, as it were, cast into the wilderness because we didn't have access to our property, which we had a right to. And uh, it was only an error in the writing of the, uh, of the uh, document, uh, the LEP, that caused us not to be able to have that access. So we thought, what can we do? And uh, we rang up an old friend, and, uh, or an old friend rang us on, on the night, and um, we were discussing. And Sue said, Paul thinks we should secede from Mossman. And, uh, he, he, you know, he's got this character called the Prince of Y and, you know, he painted him in the 60s and so on. And, you know, you think perhaps we create the Principality of Y. And she said, she was a lawyer, go for it. And so we drew up the manifesto and contacted the council and the mayor, who was a really lovely lady, said, I'll accept your unilateral declaration of independence. And she put on her regalia and the press came and the journalists and the television and everything like that. And we presented her with our UDI and she gave us a document and we were seceded. As far as I know, we're the only uh, principality in Australia that's actually received recognition from the other side. Um, so there we were and um, we proceeded to start making regalia and doing all that sort of thing. And uh, we've had a hell of a lot of fun with it since. And we have a Y Day every year to which lots of people come and they sing songs and show pictures and uh, generally, you know, behave in a bohemian fashion, I suppose you would call. The Principality of Y and Mossman Council, a poem for Mossman Council. What does Y personify if gorgeous Mossman is a whale? Why a dolphin with a golden tail, just as lovely on a smaller scale.